Hi everyone, my name is Rick. Welcome back to my channel. Again, I'm in my backyard. This is my garden entrance and I'm going to be taking it around uh, the yard today and I selected a bunch of Hoyas um, that I don't think I showed you before or I haven't showed you in a long time. So I'm going to be talking about those and um, just a lot of the stuff that I bring, I've bring, i been bringing out of the greenhouse because the weather has been getting pretty warm. Uh, daily average uh, 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit um, during a day and dropping down to 60 degrees. So the Hoyas are beginning to put out some new growth and the orchids are pretty happy and putting out a lot of spikes. So yeah, let me just start out here. This is my um, weirdo uh, bromeliad. This is a Vrisse simplex. It puts out these really long uh, pendure looking flower spikes. Usually a bromeliad, these are upright, but this guy has them hanging like this, which makes it quite uh, a beautiful um, specimen. So these I'm assuming naturally grow on trees and the flowers hang like that. Um, yeah, it's not a very fancy uh, bromeliad foliage wise, but the, the flowers are definitely um, outstanding on this guy and they last a long time. So let's see over here, we got a Hoya Kadada. Uh, it's been out here a few weeks now. It did flower a couple times uh, and it looks like one of the peduncles is getting ready to flower again. So this guy flowers on and off all summer, which is really nice. Um, it's Hoya Kadada from Sumatra. So the flowers are really, uh, really hairy and really stunning to look at and I'll, I'll add a a picture to the screen when I edit. And this is my cactus. I think it's called a donkey tail cactus. It's getting really long. I hope it flowers for me this time this year. Uh, it has really pretty, really uh, dark uh, red flowers, so it's really nice. And over here, my uh, Australis alba marginata. Uh, these kind of like a little bit of the cooler weather, so it's doing really, d doing really well here. It's pretty happy. I think you guys saw my queen from last time. And what else is here that's putting out signs of bloom? Uh, this is a Hoya pachacata alba marginata, and it has a uh, it has this peduncle, and it's putting out more flowers on there and another this is flower spike right there. One thing that disappointed me was that this uh, Hoya Suasiana, um, it did have some flowers forming on one of these peduncles, but it didn't make it. Um, but my Hoya David Kamingii has some um, peduncles. It has about five or six peduncles and I see three that are coming along uh, really really well so these shouldn't abort because the weather like I said has been staying um, above 60 at night so let me show you a couple orchids I think last time I showed you guys this unknown um, catlea I didn't detect the fragrance but it's uh, it's actually really fragrant. I smelt it last night, and it's pretty pretty fruity, um, pretty pretty smell. I really like that scent on that one. And this is my um, uh, philodendron um, pedatum variegated. It's doing really well, putting out a lot of nice nice variegated leaves. And this guy is a, um, this is a Jose Bueno. And I have quite a few of these throughout the yard. They really didn't seem uh, to mind the cold that much. So they're pretty, doing pretty well still. And one more orchid over here. This guy is really pretty. I think I showed the name last time. And it's Green Valley Dressy. And it's really, really fragrant. I really like that one. I bought uh, this Rankus stylus out here. I didn't think it was getting enough sun 
in the backyard so I brought it over here because this is the season it should be blooming so um, I'm surprised I don't have a spike on this guy so I added a little bit of fertilizer as you can see there so hopefully something will happen and the chickens are out and they're eating my lily so I gotta put an end to that because I want to see that lily bloom hey guys go away So over here is my Hoya fungi. It is really, really beautiful. As you can see, it's a really good size. And this plant grows really well for me here in Florida. It actually started out as a, a two node cutting uh, back in the late spring last year. So all this uh, growth in less than a year. And what else do I have here? I, have this, I think I showed this last week, is the um, Vickyai Cross Chicken Farm. It's gonna live here this summer. I think it'll like this spot. Let's see what's back here. Let me show you. My orchids that I showed from last week are still doing really well. Let's see, they're beautiful. So let me just go around the yard here and show you a few things and then I'll get to the Hoyas I'm going to be talking about today. So you see these are some of the plants that I moved out here from the greenhouse. We got a silver dollar up here now. We got an MA00, oh no, this is MA23. It's a verticillata type. This is Hoya uh, Ruthie, or Ruthie. It's really splashy and unique looking flowers on that one. And this is my big Jose Bueno that uh, didn't, uh, there was some winds back in October and it got tossed around quite a bit. A lot of these leaves got damaged. Let me just show you some of the newer, this is a newer leaf coming out nicely splashed. And usually for this guy, in the summertime when it's hot and humid, these leaves can get twice as big as this and the variegation is nicer uh, than that. So looking forward to that. And over here I have the Yopi. Uh, even stayed out here when it dropped down to 55 degrees the other night. Didn't miss a beat and some plants that I need to work at or work on uh, this spring. There's a lot of little projects that I have going on. Wanted to show you my uh, Rotusa here. She stayed out here the whole winter and I just noticed the other day it has, and it flowered most of the winter and, uh, and it's still putting out new buds and I just noticed that these we're getting ready to flower again. So excited about that. And now let me get to the Hoyas I have picked out for you. We'll talk about them and um, let me know in the comments what you think about them, what's your favorite, what you would have done with them if you had to take care of them. So I appreciate if you just comment below and give it a thumbs up and the first one i have for you is hoya michelle as you can see it's uh it does get a good amount of splash uh sometimes not so much but you can see within this plant you have like uh like probably 75 percent splash on that leaf and about 15 20 percent splash on that one to like or even less than that. So within a plant, you can get all kinds of uh, different degrees of splashing. So this Hoya actually stayed out here when the temperatures dropped down into the low 30s, uh, just barely stayed about freezing. So, uh, but it didn't seem to suffer much uh, damage at all. Uh, you can see it's putting out this new growth and it has this really long vine. So what I'm going to do with this Hoya is I'm just going to leave it alone because it's putting out new growth. 
So that tells me that the root system is doing well. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and make sure uh, it stays continuing um, with putting out new growth and looking healthy. So this guy gets back, uh, gets to go hang out with the other ones and uh, I'm not gonna do anything to it uh, probably all summer. And this is Hoya erythrina. As you can see, this guy, um, it really got exposed to a lot of cold in the shade house. It dropped down into uh, 34, 35 degrees in there. And it did get some sun. Uh, it gets quite a bit of sun in there. So this is a combination of cool, cold weather and uh, a lot of sun. Hoyas get this really deep red color under, uh, under normal sunlight. So this guy is not putting out any new growth. So this guy is going to go on my observation table. And if uh, the temperatures, when they stay above 65 and um, 75, 80 degrees during the day, they should be putting out new growth. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. If it doesn't put out any new growth, then I'm going to have to cut it back and reroot uh, as many cuttings off of this as possible. Because when it's growing season, uh, here in Florida and these outdoor plants are not putting out any signs of new growth that means there's something wrong with the roots um, and it would be best in the plants uh, best interest to uh, reroot uh, the new cuttings and same story with this Hoya I uh, got from Thailand as Hoya Joy I have bloomed it uh, last summer it's pretty nice as you can see it has up the dunk hole left here um, and again the same story it got too cold in that shade house and it gets pretty bright under that 50 percent shade cloth uh, and this hoya again got that uh, really nice maroon uh, color uh, as you can see it's very attractive i don't know how healthy it is for the plant to get this much cold and sun uh, in this case, this plant is going to go on to observation as well because it doesn't have any new growth points. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on this one like I am doing it with the erythrina. And if it uh, starts putting out new growth, it should be an indication that the root system is doing well. And I'll just leave it in this pot um, all summer. And this is a Hoya Kentiana Lori Lin. And you can see it's the Alba Marginata form. The variegation is in the outside. So this guy again experienced a good amount of cold uh, down to 34 uh, degrees in the shade house. Um, so it does get about 50% uh, sunlight. Uh, it's under 50% shade. But this guy I did notice the other day it's putting out lots of new growth. So the root system must be doing well um, and this plant is going to be brought out into the garden and uh, we'll keep an eye on it that way but I don't think I'm gonna repot this Hoya and this Hoya here is Hoya Leland Joseph you can see it has really pretty splashy leaves um, like that they're pretty thick uh, they get pretty good size as you can see, like some of these yellow or yellow leaves, they got a little bit of sun uh, bleached out uh, from last summer. So I decided to move it into a sh um, into a shadier spot in the shade house, and it's getting out these, putting out these really pretty new leaves. And this is new growth, and it's putting out a peduncle. This guy here. Uh, also um, was in that shade house down to 34 degrees so almost freezing and it survived and uh, one of the things I like about Rigida and Verticillata type Hoyas is that they are very strong uh, they can tolerate the cold uh, much better than other Hoyas and they can tolerate drought they're really um, really easy to grow um, easy to flower and they have a really strong uh, jasmine uh, scent that I really like. Uh, so this is one of my uh, crosses that I did with a Hoya Acuta Pink. 
uh, a cross with RHM1, which is basically a verticillata cross with a rigida. And uh, this guy came out with these really nice, veiny, textured, elongated leaves uh, that I find quite attractive. So there's some newer leaves that look pretty cool, as you can see there. So I'm really excited to see uh, the flower color on this. I hope it's going to come out a really nice pink color uh, on this uh, plant here. So uh, it should be blooming soon. It's a blooming size plant. So uh, probably I'm assuming uh, this spring, summer, it, we're going to see the blooms on this guy. And uh, this is a Hoya stoniana, and it doesn't really get a lot of fanfare. Um, I, my guess is that the leaves aren't really striking, and uh, a lot of people like Hoyas that have really fancy leaves that sun stress or are splashed. Uh, this Hoya is uh, hardly ever splash, it shows any splash whatsoever. The only interesting characteristic about the leaf is that it's pretty thick and the backside is very fuzzy. So that's kind of uh, kind of nice. It's a relatively easy Hoya uh, to grow and to, to bloom. And the flowers on this guy are exquisite, as you can see uh, from the picture on the screen. And it's putting out new growth. And this guy was uh, took the cold temperatures like a champ. And it's doing pretty well and putting out a lot of new growths. So... Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on him. He looks fine. He's probably going to stay in this pot all summer long. And this Hoya here is Hoya species Semar GN003 from the Philippines. And sometimes it goes by the name of Yellow Sapphire. And uh, the leaves aren't that uh, spectacular. They're about an inch and a half long, as you can see here. Um, but what's exquisite about this Hoya is that the flower is quite unusual and as you can see in the picture um, it is a really stunning flower unusual and it's yellow so what not to love and this guy is a Hoya Mitrata splash a lot of people uh, first mistaken this for Hoya species Bontoc silver or some other name I don't know but uh, when it boomed, it was definitely a Hoya Matrata. As you can see, I got this and uh, in Thailand. I had to remove all the roots and all the soil, so I stripped the, um, the vine uh, and rerooted it when I got back here into the United States. And so it's rerooted nicely. It's put out this really nice growth and two leaves coming up there. And those two little leaves over there as you can see, there are, uh, they started coming up about two weeks ago and they look like they're gonna have a lot of splash, I'm hoping. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. It makes a very striking, uh, beautiful plant, uh, beautiful pot when it's all full and grown. So really excited about uh, growing this uh, Hoya Matrata. And that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe and come back next week. I appreciate if you leave a comment below, please like and subscribe and I will see you next Sunday. Bye bye.